the dynamic thermometer gives you lots of extra room in your level. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you infinite thermometer. To ensure your level runs smoothly, it is very important that you do not have lots and lots of things being loaded at once. The best way to do this is to carefully manage your loading zones. We'll go over some tips and tricks to help you manage your loading zones, allowing you to increase performance on your dynamic thermometer levels. As a general rule, you want your loading zones to be as compact as possible. There are a couple of things you can do to achieve this. When creating in a dynamic thermometer level, you will want to avoid gluing things as much as possible. Larger objects like floors and platforms are especially best left unglued. They can often create large loading zones and cause unnecessary stuff to stream in. Instead, make objects either static or use the anti-gravity tweaker to keep things in place. Another thing you want to pay special attention to when creating a dynamic thermometer level is the radii of your sensors. As the radius of a sensor gets larger, so does its loading zone. In dynamic thermometer levels, you should always try to shrink down the radius of your sensor as much as possible. Additionally, you can also tweak the trigger angle range to shrink down the loading zone even further. One of the biggest troublemakers in dynamic thermometer levels are long logic wires. Remember, connecting two objects or logic pieces with a wire will put them in the same loading zone. If the objects are far apart from each other, this loading zone will be very large and cause many things to load in when it's not needed. Here, the button on the bottom left of our level is connected with a wire to a teleporter on the top right of our level. Because the resulting loading zone has the shape of a large rectangle around all the objects in the zone, the loading zone will include the area in the center. This means that when the player is in the center, both the bottom left and top right area of the level will get loaded into our streaming zone. As Sackboy is nowhere near these areas, loading these parts of the level while Sackboy is in the center is a waste of resources. This can possibly affect the performance of the level. It's best to prevent this kind of setup whenever possible, so we will delete the wire causing the issue. As you can see, unplugging the wire removed a large loading zone and left us with three nice compact zones. So how do we get the signal from the button to the teleporter without creating a huge loading zone? Remember, using a normal tag sensor to transmit the signal wirelessly would create a very large radius, which also creates a large loading zone. This is why we will use the remote tag sensor. Because this sensor does not have a radius, it does not create a loading zone in the same way as a normal sensor would. First, plug the button into a tag. Then grab a remote tag sensor from the sensor section of the tools bag and hook it up to the teleporter. Now comes the tricky part. If we press the button, nothing happens. This is because the remote tag sensor is not loaded in while we are in this section of the level. The solution here is to use a preloader to make sure that the remote tag sensor is loaded in when we are about to press the button. 
Grab a preloader from your tools bag and place it near the button. Now, open its tweak menu. Select Place Zone and move the box over to the teleporter area. Set it to full load and tweak the maximum detection range so it covers the button. You also want to make sure it has a correct layer range. By doing this, the destination area and remote tag sensor load in your level whenever a player is close to the button. This makes the area ready for someone to teleport to. As you can see, the teleporter works again. Plus, we still have our three separate loading zones. Now you can be in the center without the rest of the level loading in. Use this technique whenever you can to replace long wires. Your dynamic thermometer levels will run even better. If you ever want to know exactly what is being loaded in a certain area, you can use the Lock Dynamic Loading option from the Start menu. When you enable this, all dynamic loading will pause and you can fly around to see what is currently being loaded in. This feature can be very useful to identify areas of your level where too much stuff gets loaded in. To see how this works, Let's see if this level really has separate loading zones. If we enable lock dynamic loading while in the center of the level, we can see that both corners of the level are indeed not loaded in. We can also check to see if our preloader works too. Let's land near the button that teleports the player, lock dynamic loading, then check to see if the destination is indeed being loaded in. As you can see, our new setup works beautifully. Another way to gain more information about your loading zones is to zoom the camera out until you start seeing colored boxes. This view is called the Streaming Visualizer. As you fly around your level in this view, active loading zones become visible while loading zones that are currently stored in memory will show up as red boxes. If you have set up your dynamic thermometer level correctly, only parts of the level close to Sackboy will be visible. The rest of the level should show up red. You can also combine this view with lock dynamic loading to see what is currently loaded in. Areas that are currently loaded in will show up as green like our preloaded teleporter setup. Objects that have permanency tweakers will also show up as green as well. 